Good morning, Turtle Club. How's it going this Friday? We are just about to approach the hour of 8 a.m. And we're back to Skyward towards 100. And we're actually uh, super stoked about this area because uh, most of what these... Uh, well, I, I say most, but that's kind of a real poor choice of words at the moment. Um, and the reason why I say most is because I'm presuming, like many other Zelda games, this is going to be very formulaic in the way that they build things out. Um, but in the last area, we, we went around and we got that dragon scale and it let us swim and that kind of stuff, right? And in this area, from where I'm looking at, it looks like there's a whole lot of hookshot going on. Like, not only that, but if you look over here, it looks like we're going to have to, like, do some really crazy hookshot and stuff. Hey, Jesse Skillen. How's it going? So, I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited. We are going to completely start coming through here. Uh, it looks like, from what I can tell, eventually... We're going to hookshot our way all the way up to the treasure chest there. These things are dangerous because I wind up swinging my sword like that way too much. And get pretty much close to nowhere. Shock myself all the time. Like that. <laughs> Hope your day's going good, Jesse. We just started streaming. We're hoping to get... Oh, how unfortunate. It looks like it's... We're probably going to have to hookshot our way up to some sort of higher area up there, too. I don't think there's anything up top. Alright, so we're going to... We're going to first get our dousing rod, right? So... We're facing that way. We're going to presume we're going, like, possibly there. Oh, wait. Look at that. That's a very suspicious-looking question mark. And it's the little area that we just sort of sent the beetle at, so... I I'm presuming that's where we're going. So as a lot of Turtle Club members may realize, I watch a lot of old TV because at one point I didn't get an opportunity to watch a whole lot of television. I, at my my busiest in life, I was working um, like two, technically three jobs simultaneously because I was doing some some consulting work, which usually means that. You know, people know that you can do something, and so they take advantage of that something and pay you um, a minor amount of money versus what they could really pay a professional person on staff all the time. If you can get some contracted consulting work, it's even better because then you get paid lots of money to do whatever it is that they can't afford to pay somebody full-time. It's a short time. You get paid better, but they don't have to sign anybody on so at one point in my life, I was sleeping about four hours a day. Um, I'd wake up, I'd go to the, my, my job with the cable company, I'd finish the job with the cable company, I'd come home, I'd possibly do some consulting work, um, possibly not, and, oh, that's not good, that's not good, that's not good. And then afterwards, I would go deliver pizzas at a pizza delivery place. And so what that basically pulled in, boils out to is during all of that, there's not a whole lot of time to watch television. So a lot of TV shows that people are like, you should watch this mag, or do you remember it? This is like that show mag. Um, I, I fail to catch those references, unfortunately, because I, I was just way too busy in life at the time. Um, but... On the plus side, I get to watch some of these shows, like, just binge watch them for free. And that's that's kind of cool on one hand, right? Um, 
because I don't have to wait for anything. You know, if, if it's like to be continued, it, it's coming out. If it's one of those, you know, stay tuned for next season. Well, next season's already happened for me because it's there, ready to be binged. Um, and so the, the latest one that I'm watching right now, I just finished um, for the like third time Downton Abbey. I I don't know what it is about the show, but I can put it on while I'm doing any kind of like mindless, monotonous task, and the plot is interesting enough to keep my brain kind of occupied but it's also very formulaic like to a point there's some really cool surprises in Downton Abbey but to a point you kinda know from a trope perspective what plots are gonna come up alright so now it's telling me I have to go this way so that tells me interesting So maybe I need to turn this off. Just in case. I didn't think that got through it. I don't think we can really dig through this spot. And clearly that guy never manages to get through it with his time. But yeah, I just finished out Nabby. Um, Odin's actually watching it. Because I, I said that there's some similarities to it in Game of Thrones with some of the some of the way that they treat a lot the writing staff being they kind of treat their characters and the way that they played their characters and built them up. And so, you know, there's just a, a lot involving that. Um kind of set up and that kind of stuff. Alright. Ah, looks like um, the scammers are aware that we're streaming, so... Oh, thank you, moderator. Appreciate that. Alright, so... Hmm... So it still seems to think that we got to go through all that. So we're going to have to do the whole entire go through the mining operation area. That's not too bad. All right. I think, though, we still can't open these doors. We have to use, yep, yeah, we have to use the mine cart. We have to push the mine cart. But so the, the TV show, though, that I missed the first time around that I've started here lately, though, is one called Fringe. Now... It's definitely not what I consider a family-friendly program, um, so it would be something that I would recommend for our mature viewers. I am looking for programming that a lot of our more family-friendly people would enjoy that I've missed. If you have any recommendations for Retortal Club, and you're watching this on playback, or uh, or you're in our Discord, of course, you know, always have a place for recommendations there. But um, Fringe is, is pretty interesting, though. It's it's like an X-Files show, kind of. But it's J.J. Abrams, so a lot of it starts to make sense, and then stops making sense, and then starts to make sense again. And then stops making sense to a whole lot of people. Hey, Colin! Oh, we hit the bomb. Someone hit us up the bomb. Ah, come on. Blow up bomb. Do, 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 do. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I'm I'm pretty far along within the show now, so we're gonna try to get there. Maybe it's this little tunnel here. Am I going the right way? Looks like I am. Yeah. Anytime there's danger, you know you're probably going the right way. I also finished a couple of interesting animes. Uh, one was called Invincible, and it's not finished. It's not a, an actual anime that's ended its run, from what I can tell. I was actually... Um, 
Uh, come on, stop. Stop that, peoples. It actually was pretty interesting. I wasn't expecting the plot to go the way it did. So that was that was a nice change. You know, I think that's I think that's a disadvantage about being old, right? Uh, it's said in several different texts that there's nothing new underneath the sun, and and I think that not so much that there's nothing new underneath the sun, but there's only so much you can do with certain combinations for certain kind of experiences due to the fact that human imagination, while infinite, is still limited. And so from an entertainment perspective, you know, you only get so many different ways to tell certain stories. And if you think about it right, Shakespeare uh, did the ultimate uh, boy meets girl kind of story with Romeo and Juliet. And most uh, any kind of boy meets girl plot points these days are trying to capture something similar. Um, Homer's uh, Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, those are definitely what we still base a lot of the hero's journey on. We just have different various ways to go about that. Uh, there's only so many ways that you can write a story about a MacGuffin. Uh, and those that aren't, you know, writers, uh, a MacGuffin is a, a literary device that for some reason, everybody's trying to find it. Uh, the Maltese Falcon, you know, the Ark from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, Grogu from the Mandalorian. Those are all MacGuffins. People trying to get it, and after they get it, basically that's... They gotta hold on to it, whatever you do, right? So, I think as you get older like me... You've seen a lot of MacGuffins. You've seen a lot of Boy Meets Girl. You've seen a lot of Hero's Journey. And so finding any kind of show or reading any kind of book or watching any kind of uh, comic play out or anything along those lines that happens to be surprising is, is really hard to come across. No! Uh, hey! Hello there. The name looks kind of familiar. Um, so, if you're returning to this role club, welcome back. If not, welcome. Alright. That's the other bad thing about being 40, is your, your brain just doesn't retain information as well as it should. Number one, and number two, it, and not to uh, put too fine a point on it, is... I have a tendency to not recollect names really well. And it drives Digrat crazy, my wife. Um, she, bless her heart, I she puts up with me in a number of different uh, issues in the world. And one of them is that I can watch a television show and there will be a person who has a very similar appearance, a, another actor, and I really won't know who in the world of everything that person is. I won't even remember what that person's from. I'll just know that the person drives me crazy because I recognize them. Oop. And I mean, it has to be a, a pretty iconic actor for me to keep in mind who we're talking with. Alright, there we go. Go ahead and pull out the dowsing. And unfortunately, I, I wish I could say that that was just, you know, TV shows and famous people, but it's real people, too. The, the running joke, of course, is I, I didn't know Digrat's real name for the first two weeks that we knew each other. Um, and couldn't have picked her out in a crowd if I needed to. And that's largely because we met online, though. But the sentiment still stands. I probably, until we started hanging out a lot more, probably would not have been able to tell you her name at gunpoint or anything similar. Card surfing, do do do. Do 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 do. Now I believe out here is ultimately where we get to yeah right over here I 
I know I have those marked because they're important intersections to be able to go. And I know I'm going to need to have these marked. But I also need to remember, because of my shiny squirrel syndrome, that I need to go over there to try to find the party wheel. We found the party wheel, we went to the party wheel, we didn't have a way to bring the party wheel with us. So we had no way to keep the party going, as it were. You know, I, I gotta say, I like how the developers for Zelda make the different tones for the You Found a Secret different for the games that you play. I think that's cool. I think that's a real neat way of doing things. Let's just presume, for the sake of argument, this goes there. Well... That's a very suspicious axe. Let's go there instead, shall we? Um, wow, that's really on the nose. I know... Hello, Mr. Electric Shrimp Guy. Fall the other way. There we go. Nope. And I think it's. I don't think we can get up there if we wanted to. Can we? Like maybe this edge we could get up to. Oh. So lame. We don't have a way to move those when they get put down. So we're gonna have to manage to get one right here. If we manage to get one right there, I think we'll be able to get all the way up. You there. With the anger and the electricity issues. Hello. Hi. Still you with the anger and the electricity issues. Come on, come on over this way. He doesn't want to come over this way. He doesn't hate me that much, apparently. Come on. Yeah, they actually, they leash. That is such a weird behavior in a Zelda game. Oh my gosh, okay. Not really happy about that because I missed my one chance over there. But I think if I go in and out of this door, it'll reset them. So let's go ahead and use the really weird door. I haven't been able to figure out what this whole one-eyed motif thing in this in this zone really is. But it's kind of sad. I mean, it's like all the robots got a black eye for something. Alright. I also need to catch some tumbleweeds while I'm here. Which is a lot more odd to say aloud than it should be. We really need this guy to be like here when he dies. I don't think we're going to get it. Oh. Maybe, maybe. Oh, 
don't think we got it that time either. Oh, and it... Oh, my gosh. Really, game? Okay. Well, my laziness only allows me to be creative for so long. <laughs> so we're going to go toward the big old bright blue glowy thing in the middle of the level. Ah. Hey, Shadow. Welcome to the Lurk Squad today, sir. Hey, Shadow. It's kind of cool. Uh, Turtle Club, if you if you don't know, Shadow's actually been with the Turtle Club for so long that I, I really think that um, Guy was here before I actually started live streaming. Like when I was doing test stuff to see if it worked. And what's interesting is I was going through like my photos the other day. And I remember back in 2017, back when we were, when we just started doing this, one of the first people to send us a donation was Shadow. And I, I'm pretty, I was pretty certain. I was 99.9% .9 certain that Shadow was like the first person to ever donate to the channel. And... I was so stoked about it, I actually screenshotted it on my phone when it happened and sent it to Digrat. I was like, look, you know, this is like, this is amazing. Someone thought this was so cool that they decided to, to you know, send money. And um, I actually found that screenshot. I was so certain it was Shadow. It was kind of cool to see. You know, to get that kind of memory off my phone while I was going through to kind of clean some stuff up. It was really crazy that the fact that that photo was still on the phone after all that time. Oh, here's some, uh... Oh no, oh no, oh no! Well, that was unfortunate. Can I actually... There we go. Interesting. Not exactly what I was certain was going to happen, but I do see the glitter for the... Oh, I forgot. We have that whole entire spirit world thing from... Zelda 3 we have to do here. Okay. Hi. Goodbye. So, that's kind of interesting that that happens. I, so, as I mentioned earlier, I was watching an old show named uh, called Fringe. Wow. That was way too quick for it to, like, recognize... Oh yeah, lots of good times and memories. We get to see Fee like flip out again. That's when we get the power up that she basically bounces around like a very caffeinated squirrel. Got so many memories, so much stuff that we've done, so many games. I need to go and get a game count of like everything that we put. It's one thing that we have another streamer that we like to watch. It does a lot of cross point here lately because if you follow Reddit at all, you may have noticed this really giant Zelda 3 needle point map that's been floating around. That's Chadley, old man Chadley. And he's got a thing where he basically has a, a Discord room for his viewers where he basically lists all of the stuff that he's played and beaten and whatnot. And, all right. Ready your sword, and thrust it. <laughs> this kind of looks interesting.
This is the downfall of not playing this often. I know there's some kind of like mechanic here. There's my spirit vessel. Which looks very close to those flowers that Zelda loves. Nope. We're, we're gonna... We're just gonna go ahead and dig wrap this up, guys. We're gonna skip all of the uh, recommendations again. Now, all I remember about this is twofold. One, those little orbs are important. The white ones. The green ones are also important. I know we get a timer that freezes the guardians as soon as we step out of this. And I think the white balls are what does that. Um, this gray area, thankfully, is the only area we can really do this in. Oh, that's 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 good to know. Um, the quicksand is still in play. That's unfortunate. All right. We are possibly going to fail this one. I really should have saved our game before we got in here. I did not follow my usual advice of saving early and saving often. Oh boy. Okay, so here we go. So that's what we were hoping to find, is the halting of the stuffs. We get none of our tools here. I don't remember what that does other than I think it fills our little flower petal up. Right? Maybe not. Wow, this is not good. Ah! We did lots better last time. Like, lots and lots better. Oh, wow, those are even boarded back up. Okay, that's kind of rude. Hey, Spider Link. Spider Link. In the silent realm, it's Spider Link. Which means that there's probably one all the way at the top of this thing. You know, this is still pretty cool with how they... I don't remember what these do. Like, seriously, I do not remember what these little orbs here do, so I'm perplexed. Alright, so there's two there. There's a whole lot that way. So... If I had to say for certain, this is the way we want to go. And that's our way up. Okay. Well, on the bright side, I've been playing a lot of Elder Scrolls online in my downtime, and I know that little alcoves like this are used for hiding and passing your time. So... Oh, 
Oh, that is all sorts of rude. All sorts of rude. Oh, oh, we failed that. We failed that. We failed all of that. Oh, that is much failure. Much failure, such doge. Oh my goodness. Alright. Oh. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme out. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Woo. <laughs> that was. Boy, we are. We are. We wish we had excuses that were actual, not excuses, but reasons as to why this is going so bad for us. We, we just don't. <laughs> we're just really bad today. Oh, alright. Wait, I thought I already got... Is this another one of these like this? Oh, really? Like... And now how... what? Okay, let's, let's do some math here. One, two, three, four... F failure, okay. Clearly, I'm missing something here. Oh. Push the cart, Mag. Make yourself a little taller. Do what short people do. Find a step stool. Ah. And I know somewhere off in the distance, Digret's snickering at that. Because Digrat, as some of you may be aware, is about a foot shorter than I. And she consistently needs me to help find stuff for her and get things off the top shelf. Oh, oh. What is up with that? What is up with that? These are some crazy aggro ranges. Oh my gosh, okay. Take a deep breath. We were close by one of these when it happened. Hello, really scary statue thing that looks like it's from um, a uh, year of the Tomo anime. All right. <laughs> um. How far is this thing going to chase me? Tell him out of its light. Okay, that's good. Alright. Thought that, that was a yellow jump, but it's not. Okay. So this looks like the one we're going to have to go after, because I have no clue how to get that other one. And failing to get that one too. Alright. Ooh, 
Okay. So... So there's two more left. There's one there. Question is, I guess we go down and around to get at it, maybe? We don't have too long to figure it out, that's for certain. So there's two of them, there's just one right in the middle of nowhere. Trixy filthy hobbitses. Okay, I remember this. This red liquid is bad for us. We don't have long. Oh wow, this is just bad timing. Come on, red liquid, red liquid, red liquid. Go for it, go for it, go for it, go faster. Oh wow, okay. That was beyond too close for comfort. Um, is this the last one? Hey, it's the last one! Okay, we're, we're just gonna let this screen stay there for a second. Okay, um, wow. All we have to do now is make it to the giant blue glowing space on the map, which is all the way over there. <laughs> At least the timer situation's done. Uh, these, yeah, um, like, very deceptively music, right? Like, you got this nice kind of chill ambience to it right and then there's this whole entire oh you're about to really just be smashed like a bug the thing is I don't even know what happens really like I've not experienced what happens when they catch me I just know that something chasing me should not catch me that's like primal right <laughs> Claw shots. Okay. So. And it's plural. So does this is just start you off with a double hook shot then? I'm sure with the mechanics of this game using motion controls originally. I am not going to like this at all, to a point. But I'm going to have some fun with it. Slightly, slightly disappointed. Huh. Interesting. Not exactly what I was thinking, but still pretty cool. Oh, there's a, uh, a goddess cube over there. Let's see if we can get to that. Okay. Oh. 
So I don't have to be right on target, so that's good. So no hook shot in this game. Just this claw shot thing. And it's, you know, not bad. Okay, it'll detonate bombs. That's really good to know when we're not standing next to one. Will it grab me items? No, but it does have hit detection on items. Interesting. Oh, okay, that's a whole entire thing over there. Oh, bird. So it doesn't do any damage, but it does... It doesn't really stun. Huh. Intriguing. Boy, howdy. Wow. So... Not even enough time to get it out while I'm sinking. Alright, so... Claw shot is interesting. Um... So we know we need to go through that area eventually. We know that's the fun area that we haven't got to. We got to go there. So let's try to get to our... Well, first off. Oh. Oh, that's rude. That was... <laughs> oh my gosh. Could you be any more rude game? Oh. That's some, oh, that's some, it, okay, I might have to watch that on the, on the playback, because, yeah, I'm watching the playback right now, he was not there, this is some clear Trolltendo stuff, wow. Yeah, we're, we're going to get wrecked by this guy. Wow. He who fights and runs away lives to have his heart meter eventually be refilled. Which is completely fine by me. Digging on the claw shot though. It it's it's growing on me a little bit. Not a hundred percent, but it's getting there. Okay. It has a slow wind up. It doesn't stun with the swirlies like some weapons do. But it definitely does some stuff. Oh well. Still don't know what the bugs are used for. I just have been told by one person that I should be trying to cut at all the bugs. So, lo and behold, that's all we'll be trying to do when we come across them.
a red rupee, which is worth 20 rupees. It's not bad. Apparently there's a way on top of that. Oh, of course there is. It's called a beetle. I think that's another thing that I both enjoy and, and get a little frustrated with is I'm used to exploration games like this, right? Sandbox exploration, I guess, is the best way to say it. I was trying my hardest to see if this guy can be hookshotted out of his spinny. Nope, he can't. Oh, wow, that's good to know. That's real good to know. <laughs> you cannot claw shot anything with super positive results. All right. So this is definitely not hook shot. Now let's just get that out of the way. Definitely not hook shot, but it's got its uses. It helps with traversals. All right. So either the game doesn't recognize that because it's a switch that's already been toggled or the game will never recognize that because of reasons all right all i need is a little boost we definitely want to save we definitely want to save. So it, it does at least acknowledge some level of interest there. Oh, that was interesting. Call that a draw. That one we won't call it a draw, though. All right, so no hook shot section here. Hookshot has a purpose now. As far as I'm concerned, that is a free way to pop the puffer fish without having to use any kind of Deku seeds. And unlike Deku seeds and their really unforgiving arc, that's just a one shot, straight line, do things. Oh, and one second. <laughs> that's unfortunate. That is super unfortunate. That is the green screen falling down off of the chair. One second, Turtle Club. Alright. 
Let's see if we can't get this put back into place real quick. And other than that white dot right there, it's good enough. For those that hate having a dead pixel, I apologize. It's not a dead pixel. It's just my portable green screen. close enough to this guy ain't gonna care. Whoa, what was that? Really? Was not aware that that's how those guys worked. not good this is not good this is not good all right well we almost got electrocuted to death not the way we wanted that to go for certain if we had to go we would hope it'd be by you know explosion but hey And no friendly hearts there. That's fine. Friendly heart there, though. All right. And some more hearts. That show up because we've traveled through time. Time travel is amazing. Well, Legend of Zelda time travel is amazing. It's very uncomplicated until you try to get a timeline together for an actual, you know, lore reason. I must admit, the fact that this shield auto repairs itself makes it worth every rupee I paid for it. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about that, right? This game has a repair feature for its shields, and it kind of bums me out. I mean, people were asking for repair features in Breath of the Wild, they want to repair the weapons. They get a really good weapon, they want to be able to fix it, right? And I get that on one hand. But on the other hand, with his expensive as some of the items in this game are I don't think I want to be able to repair my shields, right? I, and my swords. I mean, think about Breath of the Wild. If if they did give in to the player demands, right? And start letting everybody repair their stuff. I really think that the economy in that game, for the, a single player experience, would have been abysmal. I mean, could you imagine having to harvest rupees for hours on end because your shield broke? And you wouldn't be able to really go out and fight stuff because parrying is such an important feature in Breath of the Wild. Eh, not really worth the hype to get all the way up here. I mean, that's just... 
I mean, that would be just completely like in a disaster level kind of situation. Alright, I need to... Spider Link, Spider Link. Starting off with double hook shot. Nah, it doesn't stink. Upgrading these to get like a little bit of an extra reach wouldn't be too bad, I guess. But, hmm. Land Ryu Caves. Whoa! Well, it's our favorite Goron that's always places where he's not supposed to be. Let's, uh, let's start off with this. some soft dirt spots. Okay. Interesting. The what? Okay, that's weird. That's interesting and weird. That was a lot easier than dealing with the the the, the Moblin precursor. Yes, I would prefer for you not to be standing there. Oh, we're almost out of time this morning, Turtle Club. That is... That is unfortunate. Okay, that... That was very specific about letting me know that there's something here. So odd. Hmm. Definitely lots of need for bombs, though. And I can't just crawl past him it would seem Damn. 
Nope. I'm gonna have to do it this way, I guess. Scare him and then bowl. Oh, no. Alright. So there's just nothing there, maybe? Maybe that's my way out after I go through the fun house that is that. Alright, so if I was a game developer and I just did all this stuff and I just got a key and things just kind of happened to be this door that I needed to go through, then it would stand to reason that through this white light, this yellowish glowing light, should be a horrible physical challenge. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Bet just by judging from just looking at stuff. Oh, that's not good. But the the boat that they showed in the little intro cut up, I probably have to engage its little time mechanism. And then proceed to fly by boat, as it were. Well, Nintendo would. It, oh, there we go. About to say, would it kill you, Nintendo, for to put a bird statue? Because boy, we just needed a way to sleep. Oh, we've been up. And we have played some games. We are having a great time. Turtle Club tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mag versus the Sand Sea with a buffet. I mean, we get two hours of gameplay to start with. For every sponsor who shows up, we get an extra minute. For every like, we get an extra minute. For every sub we gain, we're at 21, 25 right now. So every sub past that that we have we also gain another minute. For every viewer at 9 tomorrow, we'll gain another minute. And we have four channel sponsors. Shadow132, uh, Keo, Sally, and TMac Music. For having those sponsors on the channel, we're already going to extend the time by four minutes for them just being there. So really, really appreciate that, guys. It, it means a lot. It really does. And we'll have at least two hours to explore this whole entire area maybe we'll beat this get the dragon do the dragon's challenge I presume there's a dragon's challenge because there was last time and do whatever sacred temple the dragon gives us to um, so looking forward to that but before all that I'm, I'm gonna have myself a good night and I just want to say thank you to Jesse Skillen Colin Vanderschultz and Noah or Noah <laughs> And Shadow132, one of our supporters, for being here. Um, thank you all. Um, so, you all have a good breakfast, a good lunch, a good dinner, a good weekend, a good Friday. What are you about to do to our club? Stay safe, wash your hands, and have a good one. Take care and thanks for watching.